Hi guys, my name is Matthew Baker. Thank you for joining me on this hot 105 degree Southern California day. Today we're going to remove the starter on a 1978 Porsche 911 SC. Um, the car actually, it's a 76 chassis. The engine, transmission, and wiring are all from a 1978 vehicle, so I'll be using the procedure for that model year. In general, it should work for most Porsche 911s, um, not too specific on the year range, but most likely, I'm guessing 76 to 89. Um, should have a very similar procedure. The starter on this vehicle is a Bosch starter. Um, a lot of Bosch starters were used in VWs, were used in a, a wide variety of vehicles, so um, the process for this actually can be applied to many different cars with very minor sort of differences on, on how it's done. Obviously, the Porsche, it's rear engine, it's going to be in a different position than in most vehicles, but um, anyways, let's get started. So, first things first, this is the holy bible of um, Porsche repairs, it's called the Bentley Manual, and show you the cover, pick one of these guys up on eBay, you were used. Um, Great resource, couldn't live without it. Uh, page 270 8 has the procedure for removing and installing the starter. You get a really good close up of the um, connections, and you see we're going to take off basically the first nut of the starter is going to be right down here, right above the axle. Second nut's a barrel nut, which is located right above the transmission, in a very awkward place. But uh, yeah, we're going to take that whole assembly off. Tools, very, uh, you know, not, don't really need many tools for this job. 15 millimeter wrench for the um, the nut at the bottom of the starter. 13 millimeter for the electrical connection for the power on the starter solenoid. And then a 10 millimeter Allen socket extension and ratchet for the uh, really awkward to get to barrel nut on top of the transmission. So I like to use a <clears throat> ratchet with the swivel head because there's not a lot of room to work in there and it's very awkward especially for that one, one bolt. So moving over here to the underside of the car. Please make sure that you're safe with your jack with the way that your car is raised. Always use a jack stand. I have some pressure on that jack just in case the stand fails for some reason. We are in California. This is earthquake country, so we got to make sure that this is safe and secure. And even if you're not in earthquake country, the car wiggles a bit when you're taking this thing off. You know that you're safe. So um, we have it raised up properly. I almost forgot. Very important step. Actually, the most important step. Make sure that your battery is disconnected. I have my ground strap off. Otherwise, you'll probably get some sparking under there and, you know, probably need to use the restroom after after that happens. <laughs> Anyways, let's crawl under the car. Put all the tools over on the side. These are the connections to the starter. <laughs> The uh, yellow and blue mounted onto the uh, mounted onto the six o'clock position. That's for your cold start valve. That one should get ideally should get power when you turn the switch to start the car. At the top um, twelve o'clock position, which you can't really see, is the starter solenoid wire. This is the wire where I determined the solenoid was bad because I had attempted to start the car. This wire, when you turn the key to start should get 12 volts, you know, otherwise it's, it's zero volts if it's off, but this is the main power source for the solenoid up at the top. I'll pull that one off, that one there. So with that one, uh, you know, that receives 12 volts when you turn the key to start the car. You know that uh, it's most likely the starter that's going bad, either the solenoid or the starter. So up here you have your, on your um, nine o'clock position, your main power cable, big long wire, uh, running there, and then you've got, uh, I believe, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it, so you're going to get your 13, and for simplicity, I already loosened this a little bit, so get your 13 on top, 
could probably use a socket for this too. But it's 13, you know, get that nut loose once it's loose. And again, make sure that your battery is disconnected. Let's take that nut off. There is a washer on this particular setup. There's a washer that accompanies it, so just make sure to pull that off too. So nut and washer are off. So you have the big battery cable, one running from the battery. I'll take that one off. And I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I believe this is from the alternator. They're on the same post, so just make sure, you know, take a picture of this before you start. Again, when I was showing you earlier for the solenoid wire, this is the solenoid power. It goes onto that top uh, 12 o'clock terminal. Just move that out of the way. And then this is for your cold start valve. Just take that off the terminal. Move all these wires out of the way. And now you have nothing connected to the starter. It's a dead soldier. Okay. Next are your mounting bolts. We've got one right there. You can see that one's super duper easy to get to. Really nothing complicated, just a 15 millimeter wrench for that, or socket, whatever you have. Next one is the barrel nut, which is way above the starter, up there in that awkward space um, above the transmission. So let's quickly loosen the first, the first nut. And again, I've already Loosen this a little bit so it's not going to be requiring so much force. I'm just going to loosen that a little bit so I can get my barrel nut started. And again, this is the tool we'll be using for the barrel nut. 10 millimeter Allen and my, I guess you can call it a floppy ratchet, you know, adjustable swivel head ratchet. So this is the awkward part of it. This is where you have to pretend to love your transmission because you're essentially going to be hugging it to get to that nut. So scoot on down to the underside of the car and what you're going to do is, okay, so this is the, at this point, the driver's side of the transmission. That whole section is the driver's side. You're going to take your ratchet and your extension. And you're going to lift up and over. And for, you'll need two hands for this, so I'm setting the camera down. But, essentially, what you're going to want to do, and I guess you could say I should kind of do a selfie of how I'm doing this, but I'm under here, transmission's right here, and literally with my ratchet in this hand here, I'm going to be going up and above the transmission like this. Just pretend that you really love this transmission and you're hugging it, because that's the only way you're going to get to it. I'm going to set this down. And take your ratchet. And what you're going to do is you're going to feel for a barrel nut. It's going to be at the very end, at the bell, at the bell housing of the transmission up at the very top. Um, again, I'm not holding the camera because I do need two hands. Uh, one hand you're going to hold the ratchet, your uh, right hand, hold the ratchet with that, go above the transmission and sort of, you know, you're going to essentially hug this thing. The other hand's going to be your support, your, uh, your left hand, and it's just going to guide, you're going to guide that socket, guide the ratchet with your, uh, with your left hand, and make sure it gets onto the barrel nut. So this process, and it takes a little bit of feeling to get to it. What you probably want to do is scoot up even further towards the back of the car so you can actually feel the nut. You know, feel the nut first 
And yeah, I'm practically hugging this thing right now. Once you feel the nut, put your Allen in there. And grab the other end in the back of your ratchet. And this is why I like the adjustable one. If you have a straight one, you're not going to have much much room to ratchet. Your ratchet's essentially going to hit your hit the um, hit the body where the rear bucket seats are. But with the um, with the uh, swivel, you can kind of get a better position on it and just slowly and I'm going to emphasize slowly because there's really not much room to turn the ratchet in here I'm just going to get that guy loose and again these rebuilt starters are very unreliable they're just the Bosch rebuilds made in Brazil I don't really know what they do they just probably clean them off and repackage them and re-brease them but they do not have a long life. They're uh, very poor quality rebuilds. So I'm gonna attempt, I'll attempt this rebuild myself just to make sure that this doesn't happen again because I hate being you know, stranded and having to push start the car. So as you can tell, that barrel nut is gonna be pretty loose by now. My ratchet is sort of saying that it's loose. If you haven't done this before recently then it's probably going to be on there pretty tight just make sure whatever you do not to strip the head okay so you're going to reach up take the ratchet out once you've got it super loose finger loose and we take the camera might not be able to see too much but you can see sort of the awkward position that I'm in and just once you have your finger on the barrel nut, just go ahead and take it and just remove it off. And again, there's no way to put the camera up there so you can actually see this is all just done by feel. And there should be a washer. I don't feel one on there at the moment, so I'm just going to take this off completely. Okay. Just so that you can see, that right there is the barrel nut. You can see it's threaded. And then just all you do is finish up by taking off the, uh, the other nut. if I use the right size, okay. Okay, so I take this one off last just because it's easier. Finish it up. And there's your other nut. And then just uh, grab the starter. Nothing more to it. And I'm gonna just wiggle it off. Again, I'm using, gonna use two hands on this. My starter seems a little bit lodged, but all you do is, in this case, I'm going to stop the video, but you got both of those off. All you need to do now, if it's a little bit stuck, just try to get a screwdriver. Don't pry too hard because all this is aluminum. But just, uh, you know, get under, you know, get between the little uh, the bell housing and the starter and just um, sort of try to slip it off. So. Again, mine's a little bit tight right now. I'm just going to get a screwdriver in just between here and just sort of um, gently pry it. Again, not too hard or else you're going, to, um, you're going to damage the aluminum housing. So, yeah, that's all there is to it. And then just, it just comes straight up, straight out, take it out. All right, that's it. Once, we're, once this is out, I'll show it to you out of the car.